one of the important step in the process of gene cloning it is the purification of plasmid dna so you are well familiar know that if we want to transfer our gene of interest then we need carrier molecules and here we are discussing uh, the plasmid so it is a prerequisite condition to perform gene cloning isolation of plasmid it is very uh, tricky uh, you can say that uh, step because when we attempt to isolate plasmids it may be contaminated with uh, chromosomal dna why we need step why we need this step the reason is that even if we introduced our recombinant dna plasmid so sometime uh, we want to analyze that whether our foreign dna it is inserted or not so even then we can isolate plasmid dna in addition to isolate natural plasmid so as uh, i told you that it is very tricky uh, step and and should be performed very carefully so first step is that the lysis of the cell so the lysis should be performed very carefully the first step is that to open the cell wall uh, that can allow the plasmid dna to escape or lysis can be performed so that one can get the clear lysate lysate it is a fluid that contain the content of the lysed cells that contain our plasmid dna and the chromosomal dna and if this step it is performed carefully then the plasmid dna mainly remain in intact form whereas the lysis can result in the fragmentation of the chromosomal dna because during uh, the lysis step we can also apply sharing forces sometime that can cause the fragmentation of the chromosomal dna now we get a clear lysate how the plasmid dna can be separated there are different steps but we can discuss uh, two methods here the first method it is the isopicnic centrifugation isopicnic means that the compounds that have the same density uh, they can be called it call as isopicnic and centrifugation it is a process in which we can use uh, centrifugal forces for the isolation of our compounds to isolate the plasmid dna from the lysate we can uh, centrifuge it in the presence of cesium chloride gradient that also contain ethidium bromide what is the advantage of ethidium bromide the advantage is that intact plasmid dna can bind the ethidium bromide up to certain extent because the free dna ends they are not available on the other hand the fragmented dna that provides the free end it will bind more ethidium bromide so that its density will be lower and the density of the plasmid dna it will be high and when we will centrifuge the lysate in the presence of calcium chloride rather cesium chloride gradient that contain ethidium bromide then we can get the two bands of the nucleic acid as indicated by this diagram the two bands of nucleic acid they are separated depending upon their density as i told you that chromosomal dna that is fragmented it will bind more ethidium bromide that will lower its density and it is present in the upper portion of the centrifuge tube and on the other hand the plasmid dna that is intact in covalently closed circle form it bind lower concentration of ethidium bromide because of its intact form so it is having high density and is present at the lower side in the centrifuge tube so this band 
it can be purified by using different techniques like uh, agros gel purification so this is also one of the technique by which we can isolate the plasmid dna from a clear lysate another method uh, uses the narrow range of ph where the chromosomal dna it can be denatured that is uh, its double strands they will separate from each other and uh, this range of ph it is very narrow and it is between 12 to 12.5 so at this alkaline ph double stranded dna that is chromosomal it will denature and then we can uh, neutralize uh, the lysate so because at high alkaline ph the plasmid they will remain intact and when we will neutralize the ph by using uh, acetic sodium acetate then the chromosomal dna it will again renature and it is converted into insoluble networks another cell debris uh, like the proteins rna they can also be co-precipitated by using sodium hydroxide or sodium dodecyl sulfate or SDS. Now clear lysate contain the cell debris that contain the cell wall, different type of proteins, RNA, insoluble chromosomal DNA and the plasmid DNA. So plasmid DNA in the later step it can be purified by centrifugation agrose gel or by using other techniques like the uh, gel filtration in addition to these two techniques nowadays uh, some commercial kits they are available uh, by using that kits uh, plasmid dna it can be isolated uh, within relatively uh, short time. Now there are different factors that can affect the yield of plasmid DNA. The yield of plasmid DNA finally it may be higher or lower. Now which factors it determines the yield of plasmid? So one of the factors is that the copy number of the plasmid if copy number it is high the plasmid yield will also be high and vice versa in addition to that what is the growth stage of the bacterial cells that you have uh, uh, harvested the cells if you uh, taken the cell from uh, uh, the log phase where the cells they are exponentially growing you can get the high yield of the plasmid DNA whereas if you are taken other stages like the late stationary phase the plasmid DNA it may be present in lower concentration and finally in addition to the stage of the growing of the cell of course it is also important but the physical conditions that are used for the growth of microbes they are also very important like if nutrient nutrient level it is low the DNA yield may also be low and if nutrients they are optimum cells they are growing faster they are entering into the log phase rapidly so the yield of the plasma DNA will also be high so uh, these are different methods by which the plasma DNA uh, it can be purified and also the yield of plasma DNA it can also be influenced by different type of factors.